Hello and welcome to the fourth part of Programming Firefox OS. First I'll show you what is covered in this tutorial. First I'll very briefly show you which um, integrated development environment I use. In this case it is Eclipse because it uh, offers very useful things like syntax highlighting or quick assist. Of course you may also develop in VI or any other text editor of your choice. Then I'll show you which tools are provided by Mozilla for you as a developer and I can tell you they are very very useful in your daily development experience. Then I'm going to restructure the Hello World example we developed earlier and I'm going to make it um, a little more HTML5 like, I call it HTML5 like, because you should always um, develop your apps to be as much HTML5 as possible. The Firefox OS browser itself and so the operating system is very um, tolerant regarding standards, but I really suggest write them as HTML5 like as possible. During restructuring the document, I will use two new elements, header and footer, and I will apply styles to them, and I'll show you what they will be look like. Then I come to a very interesting part, add a link, either to a website or to your own page locally. Well, okay. Now you might say, hmm, a link, of course I know what a link is, I click the link, I come to the page and I come back. Um, be surprised which different is there if you develop for um, a website, for a desktop browser, or if you develop for a mobile device. Last but not least, I'll tell you what you can expect in part 5 jQuery Mobile. jQuery Mobile is a um, kind of add-on to jQuery. Um, I think you're already familiar with jQuery for websites and um, jQuery Mobile adds specific behavior and styles and such things to jQuery uh, regarding mobile devices. We will cover this in part 5 and finally become professional. Okay, let's start installing the Eclipse IDE. It's very simple. You go to the website eclipse.org slash downloads. Then you could install the current version and the all-in-all -all version, but I suggest that you click here older versions and the Indigo packages and there's a specialized version you can see it here Eclipse IDE for JavaScript web developers so click it download it and you have a zip file you can unzip the IDE in any folder you like and uh, start the IDE when Eclipse is starting up it is asking you for a workspace location and this location should be the folder before your project folder so if you placed your project in a folder first in the folder tutorial the folder tutorial will be your workspace folder I have already done this so you should see then an empty page of the integrated development environment or a welcome page. If you see the welcome page just click to go to the workbench and you will end up here. So now we want to have our project from the last part. Select file, new, project, general, project, next. 
the default workspace location should be the tutorial folder in my case. Now enter exactly the name of your project first in my case and finish and you see the whole project is loaded and we can access all files for example index html here's our index html file our manifest.webapp file our scripts in the script folder and our styles in the styles folder Before I'm going to change the project here, I'm going to show you which useful tools Mozilla has for developers. I must say, not all of them work in combination with the simulator, almost all of them, but at the moment some do not work with the simulator, but we have a fallback. We can simply load our our files in the standard desktop Firefox browser as an HTML file and it's almost the same. So first the tools I'll show you now work with uh, the locally file on your desktop. So just click file, open and open the index.html file from your project folder and you s should see exactly the same things as in the simulator here. Okay, uh, one of them isn't synchronized. This is still blue. Um, let's refresh the application. Um, restart it. And the text should be black, but it isn't. Why isn't it black? Ah, because I didn't refresh the desktop version. Okay, <laughs> now let's continue. You can access all the development tools in the menu Extras Web Development. Sorry again, I just have the German version, <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out what the English um, version tools uh, are called, I don't know. Okay, web development and the first tool I'll show you is the debugger. You can access it via the menu or control shift s. Okay, let's click debugger. Now here the tools are opening and the debugger tab is selected. And we can see here, oh okay, this is our JavaScript and this is our JavaScript file. So, we can debug our JavaScripts. Let's do it. I'll add a breakpoint here by pressing in this area. And let's see what happens if I press say hello. Remember, if I press the button an alert should pop up. This JavaScript should be called. I press it. Oh, nothing happens. Of course not, because the debugger stopped execution exactly at this breakpoint and for more complex projects you can debug all variables, objects and whatever you are interested in. The debugger is a tool which works with the OS simulator and I can show you this. Go to the dashboard and don't click refresh, click connect. And you see, the toolbox is now connected to Hello World. I go to the debugger, I add a breakpoint, and in the simulator I click Say Hello. Nothing happens. OK, the breakpoint is here. I click Continue, and then the alert is popping up. The second tool I want to show you is the style. Okay, this is the, the German term here. I think in English it is called um, style changing. I don't know. But um, you'll find it. <laughs> okay, this here is our style for 
the header one, you remember. Okay, now you can directly change it, for example, to red, and you see instantly the heading is becoming red. And this is a very cool feature, not just because you see instantly what will happen if you change a style, but it's also animated. <laughs> it's a cool feature, really. I will show you this. Um, font size, let's make it very big, uh, 100 pixel. And, ah, did you see? It was animated, I hope. Uh, Alright, okay. Let's just say that this instantly changes the style like it will look like. I'll change the color back. I dislike red. <laughs> oh, let's remain blue. Okay. Now the last, no, not the last tool, the next tool I will show you is also in the web development menu and it's called, I think in English the term is um, test screen sizes or something similar. Okay, I select it. And what you see here now is a tool where you can change the page dimensions and instantly the HTML is rendered like it would be rendered on such a page. Perhaps a big screen or a small device like um, a Firefox OS device. The standard size is 320 times 480 at the moment. So this is how it would look like on the phone. And this is how it would look like on a, perhaps a tablet. I don't know. <laughs> this is a very cool tool to test different screen sizes. Now we come to the, yeah, I think the coolest tool I've ever seen here. <laughs> okay, and this is located here. This cube symbol, 3D, three-dimensional um, inspection. Well, okay, let's click it and, whoa! The whole page is becoming 3D and you can zoom in, zoom out. You see all the um, HTML components and the diff elements. You can inspect your whole website in 3D. Very cool, I think. Okay, but played enough. Now let's work a little. Close the three-dimensional view and go back to our project. Okay, what will I do? Well, first I'll correct an error which I had since the second part, I think. Here an exclamation mark must be present. Okay, save. What will I do now? I will add two, no, three new um, HTML tags in within the body tag and they are called header which is the header part of the document and content which actually holds the content of the web page and and the footer at the bottom of the document. In the footer I'll just put a simple text like um, copyright Peter Orla. And in the header I'll put um, this is the header. Okay. And I'll format the tags correctly so that the structure can be identified more easily. Alright, I 
I'll save the file and now let's see what is the outcome. If we reload the app in our... Well, let's close this for the moment. Okay, okay, now. If we reload the app in the dashboard or refresh, we'll see the result of our changes. Okay, what do we see here? Mm, nothing special, it's just the text, the new text we entered in the document and it is enclosed by invisible elements, header, footer and the content. So, you might say, hmm, what is the purpose of a footer if the footer doesn't appear at the bottom of each page? Okay. Um, in this part of the tutorial, this is our job. And in the next part, jQuery will do this. We'll all do this for you. But first, how can we get the footer always at the bottom of a page? Well, we'll apply styles. To apply the styles to the header and the footer element, we'll just have to go to our styles file, which is already referenced here, my styles CSS. Okay, let's open it and we will add all attributes necessary to achieve this. I have already prepared these attributes for the header and the footer tag. Okay. You see background color light gray for both the header and the footer and the width is always 100%. Now for the footer we say that the position is absolute and begins at button 0 left 0 so this means always at the bottom of the page. I save the style and let's see the result. Back to the dashboard, refresh and let's see what the result is. Very good. This is very pretty I think. The header with the background and the footer at the bottom of the page. Okay. This is also a very good opportunity to test the developer tool from, Fire from Mozilla Foundation. Um, I reload it here first in the browser. Okay, you can see the header is also at the bottom. Uh, the footer is also at the bottom. Um, for the tool, test screen sizes, and here you can see if you move the screen size, if you use different screen sizes, the footer is always located at the bottom. Okay, let's go back to our project. And the last thing I want to show you now is a standard HTML link. Okay, let's enter a link to um, well, let's use Mozilla www.mozilla.org and the title of this link is Mozilla. So, what would we expect? We would expect a link. If we click the link, the page mozilla.org is loaded and displayed. Are you sure? Okay, let's see what the simulator, uh, how the simulator will react. We go back to the dashboard, refresh the application and in the simulator, okay, we have our link. So far so good. What happens if we click the link? Ouch! An error. Why this error? Well, it's very simple. For Firefox OS you have always, or it seems, you have always to include the protocol. So HTTP is our protocol. Now this link should work. Save, back to the dashboard, refresh. 
and click the link and we are on the Mozilla homepage. OK. Now let's test this here also in the desktop browser. I reload the app, click the Mozilla link. Very good, we are on the home page. OK, now let's go back. We click the back button and we are back on our page. Hmm, OK. Now go to the simulator, let's click Oh. OK, you see, there is no back button here. So it's lo almost like in iOS, you also have no back button. You just have a home button here. So the only thing we can do now is uh, click the home button and close the application. That's not what you want. So you are in charge of the navigation and you must provide a kind of backlink for the user. All this and much other stuff is covered in the next chapter where I will explain you the jQuery integration and what is best for the user, a fluent um, user experience, responsiveness and all these things. Thank you for listening to this part of the tutorial and uh, you may leave comments if you liked it or if you disliked it also of course. <laughs> and I hope that um, we'll meet each other in the next chapter. Part 6. No, part 5. Bye.